Welcome to the After Dark Podcast with NT Paranormal, your source for all things supernatural, macabre, and strange. On this show, we discuss the paranormal, metaphysical, cryptids, UFOs, true crime, conspiracies, and everything in between. Some topics, humor, and language used on this show may not be suitable for small children. Viewer and listener discretion is advised. I don't know if our uh, intro music slaps on 12-inch subwoopers. I did write it, though, so... I really appreciate the uh, the thumbs up on that. That's nice. Um, so we're back. Today's episode is what makes a paranormal investigator a professional or an expert. It's something that gets thrown around all the time by groups, individuals, and practically anybody else with a Facebook account. Um, is there even such a thing? What are the ethics of claiming to be a professional uh, paranormal investigator? Um, so this episode, we're going to talk about the standards, the uh, training that's involved with being a paranormal investigator, um, also how you can get into paranormal investigation yourself. So I kind of structured the episode that like the first half, we're going to kind of talk about it from the point of view is the client, like somebody that has a paranormal experience and you need to locate somebody to uh, hunt the ghosts in your house. And then uh, the latter half of it is going to be more into the doing investigations yourself and, and how to break into this field and, and things like that and a answer all the questions that we get from other groups. So um, this is episode two of our reboot. It's actually like episode like 72, something like that, depending on uh, how you decide to go back and how we market it later after we start rebranding it but i'm ashton i'm the lead investigator and i'm joined by eli hatfield today say hi eli hi how are you doing today i'm okay spiffy no no not spiffy i don't think that's i don't think that word means what you think it means uh, i definitely doesn't um so we're trying this thing where we actually structure our episodes and i've got notes and stuff here so that's what you'll see me referencing sometimes um, and I think it'll help guide our discussions a little bit so that we can keep them under two hours. Um, Jeez. So, I mean, we're professional investigators. Like, like, like I, I really use, I really hate the, the term professional investigator or, or paranormal expert, which I guess we can cracks get, me up every time you say that. I know. Um, but technically we are in, we are in that. I don't get, I don't remember category. getting paid for it. Yeah. Well, see, I think. I don't know. I, I think I think we're professional experts because we've done it more than others. Like we have a routine, we have structure, we have like rules, uh, ethics that we follow, things like that. Like a like a ethics goal. Ethics that we follow. I think it's just different than somebody walking around with it. What does professional investigator mean to you? It means you get paid. But nobody gets paid for it. <laughs> That's why it's not a thing. 
does not exist. So you think anybody that gets paid for it is a scam artist entirely, or do you? Do you well, I mean, that's just the meaning of professional. You get paid for it. You have some sort of like a certificate proving you know what you're doing that you didn't get from an internet university that charged you forty bucks for a certificate. Right. I mean, I guess that's where my degree came from. <laughs> that is true. I mean, with with most professional fields, like out in the real world you would have some kind of qualification that goes along with it. Like if you're a, if you're a machinist, then you've, you've probably taken some kind of machinist course or done some kind of probably. official training from a machinist. Or if you work on telephone, I, I don't know. It's, uh, and if anyone's just listening, just assume there's air quotes around literally every word I say, just some baseline. Literally. Air quotes around the the word literally too while we're at it, um, but I mean, I don't. I it's my opinion of it's changed. So like when we when we first started doing this and we and we first grouped up, right? And and we decided that hey, this is like a thing we we do. Let's buy equipment and like tell people online that this is a thing we do. We we immediately go, got bombarded by everybody's like oh, I'm a professional investigator. I'm an expert in the paranormal, blah, blah, blah. And I didn't believe any of it. I was like, ah, no, you're not. This is stupid. Cause I know, I know what we're doing. I I find it, I find it totally ridiculous. And now that we're like, you know, eight, nine years in, um, doing it regularly, like where we have clients, we have clientele, we have, um, paranormal conferences we speak at, we have, uh, events in place in specific places like we're invited to, I I do understand where those other people were coming from saying they're professional investigators. I, I, I feel like my bar was different than what their bar was. I think they were trying to say, we do this regularly and we have a methodology for it. Whether we agree with that methodology or not, it doesn't go. Now, I, I, I believe the word expert is a little uh, muddy, but, but I, I, think, I think that, that it's fair for groups to call themselves professional. And I'm not sure if you can use expert if we can't even agree on what we're hunting. Like, I think the two words have two completely different connotations. I think professional means like you can call somebody up and they come do it and it's a routine thing for them. And they have knowledge in it. And To me, professional means you have some sort of sheet of paper that says I can trust you. Yeah. Yeah, that is true. Well, and, and none of us have that either. I mean, like... Whereas expert to me can mean, oh, I've been knitting for seven years and I've mastered it. Right. But we, we can't even we can't even all agree what it is that we're investigating and hunting. Like, we, we can't pin that down. So how could anybody be an expert at it? Um, I, th- I think one thing that's interesting is uh, people ask, like, what are the qualifications of being... Like, this is something somebody pays us for. Um, and we could get paid for it, but we, well, there's we, cho- events we choose we not could to. have gotten paid for it too. Just we're going into our, people's houses and we're not promising. If we could promise some sort of result, I wouldn't be as weird about it, but we can't. And we don't try to promise a result. Well, I feel like if we, if we try to pro- if we charge something, then we should be providing a product. Yeah. That's what I mean. A I, result, a service, but we're not providing anything exactly. Yeah. I mean, I, I mean the biggest service that we, that we really provide, like the thing that, the thing that we say we do is mainly an investigation, an honest investigation and peer counseling uh, about the things that are going on with people. Which is just basically listening to somebody and not treating them like they're insane. Yeah. Yeah. Listening to their claims and saying, uh, there's validity in this and this is what we found from an objective standpoint, do with it what you will. Um, Whereas I feel like a lot of the groups or individuals that go in, and I notice most of the people that say that they're expert paranormal investigators, it's usually an individual, not a group. I, I hardly ever see any group say, yeah, we're an expert group of ghost hunters. Or, this is, uh, Catherine says there's lots of experts, like expert squatchers and expert Nessie trackers. And Amelia says professional could be interpreted as someone, uh, as someone of a profession, not necessarily a master. Well, and you know what? I, I just had a thought reading that. So, like, expert squashers, expert Nessie trackers, right? If they're an expert at it, why haven't they caught it? <laughs> like, I can't call myself an expert ghost hunter because I have not trapped a ghost. I have not 
capture definitive proof. Like, really, if anything, we're the most bumbling because, like, well, an expert machinist can say, yeah, I created this thing and it came out perfect. But I, I can't say that we have reached any goal. Well, and I'll do this thing at work occasionally where I talk about, like, the hobby I have, the ghost hunting. And they'll be like, oh, okay, show me your evidence. And I just shut down. I'm like, uh-oh, what do I do now? I guess I've got to go on the website and show them some blurry pictures and play them EVPs. Right. Our, like, our stuff is just as bad as everybody else's stuff yeah. out there. Uh, I, we just not, have, we have mentioned it. Yeah, we have reasons it's less bad, you know. Um, and also we're looking, we're looking for different things that other people are looking for. We're looking for validity. We're, we're not just looking for that smoking gun evp or we're, we're or i mean we are but we're, we're trying to find a very specific set of criteria oh, in the things we try to capture i'm looking for something akin to that first scene in ghostbusters that scared the shit out of me with the chick in the library Shh. that's the scariest thing i've ever seen in a comedy movie just by the by but oh it's so well that's, done that's what i want like that's what i'm here for hey listen you smell that <laughs> i not only want the ghost to pop up but i want it to like be like, hey, film me. I'm a ghost. And then, like, just walk through walls and shit in front of the camera. That's that's what I would like. What I think is interesting about it, so you have a bunch of people that call themselves experts, or you have a bunch of people that, that claim that they're professionals, and you brought up, like, credentials earlier. Um, oh, shoot. I forgot to turn on my light. Um, that's fine. I'll do it. I'll do it live. Uh, but what what credentials would you want to see for this field what 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 could be taught to you like in a school because i get asked about that a lot too is like um a parapsychology certificate or parapsychology degree and um we miss the heyday of them actually doing this stuff in colleges like yeah first off that's not a real thing that's not a thing like i do have a parapsychology degree it was 40 bucks on Google. It was, it was 40 bucks and I had to print it out of my own printer, but it's official um, from Flamel University. Yeah, because Nicholas Flamel, the creator of the yeah. Philosopher's Stone. Um, it's it's 100% not worth the paper it's printed out. I don't even know why I spent the $45 on it. Like, I could have invested that in a Dogecoin. And, <laughs> and identifying garbled voices 101. Yeah. Um, but I, okay, so seriously, like, what what credentials would would you consider uh, valid for an expert paranormal investigator or or a professional paranormal investigator? No, Emilio says a ghost hunter goes out to find ghosts. A professional ghost hunter makes it a part of their lives. That's my take on it. It's a lifestyle, baby. <sighs> I don't know, man. <laughs> so uh, to me, it's things that aren't related to paranormal investigation. Like, like I think if you go to um uh criminal if you take criminal justice like you learn forensics what the taps people sold me on is that they were plumbers yeah yeah and you know that's you can you can turn your nose up at that but they are industry professionals like they know things about contracting about your house like it, it gives them a leg up on knowing that your house is going to make certain types of sounds knowing that certain physical phenomenon can happen. Yeah, like if a group showed up and it was like, oh, I'm a carpenter, I'm a psychologist, oh, I, you know, build electronics, I'd be like, oh, okay, this this seems this seems legit. Like And that, that's why when people like I don't I don't really say like my qualification is that I'm a paranormal investigator. I say I'm a mechanical engineer or an electrical engineer. I, I'm kind of a little bit of both. Um, which gives me a, a root in science, just like how the physical world works, uh, how understanding my environment, things like that. Like, I think, um, I think, a, I think a good person for a, uh, professional paranormal group would be, um, meteorologist. I, I think that would be a good, any of the science fields, really, anybody that does biology, uh, psychology, medicine, um, Emilio says this, uh, a portfolio with their methods and like cases would be a good one. Um, yeah, we have that. Uh, we have, it's like references. It's like asking for references. Yeah. And it's hard to get to that point too. Like it, like it was a long, it was a long time. I mean, it seems like we got residentials right away, but they were kind of silly, like right at first. Um, but then the further along we got, um, 
we were able to reference things that we already did and, and talk about how we took a serious approach to it. Um, the good one is the haunted toaster. Everybody likes when I mentioned that, like that, that was one of the first stranger. Uh, I I knew, I knew the person, but it's not somebody I was like close uh, with. Yeah. I associate with Like I hadn't talked to him in like 10 years. They found me online. Um, and then like we went to the house and they just kind of had these things that we debunked, but we took it seriously. Um, and, and came to the conclusion that there wasn't really anything. I would trust a videographer with camera stuff, a sound engineer evaluating EVPs would seem legit. And I'm into that stuff. And then your your dad's toaster. your dad also does that too. Um it was a possessed little toaster. Evil toaster. So uh, but but I don't I don't think there's anything you could do in school that would that would legitimize you as a paranormal nah. investigator. I would I would say um if you want to legitimize to me somebody if you wanted me specifically to take you seriously like you're trying to get in an invest into investigation and you want to and you want to call yourself a professional investigator you should start studying private investigation stuff uh it, that would be forensic sciences um basically all the stuff you would have to learn to be a private investigator it's most of the same tools it's listening devices it's video devices things like that and then uh there's a lot of uh, uh, like electrical phenomenon stuff things like that um that's my opinion on it um do you do you think there's anything in the metaphysical fields like worth going out there and learning cuz there's like the little schools and the in th- the people you can talk <laughs> no. to for for like train to be a psychic i i don't i don't think that no. I mean, I think that's fine for ghost hunting. I just, I don't think that legitimizes you as a professional investigator. It's not my thing. I don't know. I wouldn't trust them anymore. In fact, I would trust them less. <laughs> that's, it would, I would fall off the other end of that if they were like, yeah, I trained to be I mean, even a if psychic it, medium. Even if it's real, I feel like it adds a layer of there's a possibility that you could believe your own BS and that possibility there has that seed of doubt that I can't get rid of. I want somebody that's going to investigate the environment and tell me what they found. Um, and I think Emilio said it before, uh, what's the difference between a hobbyist ghost hunter, a uh, professional and an expert investigator. So uh, like, you know, like a, a hobbyist is going to be somebody that just has a recorder and just does it for fun. Like you're you're not trying to prove to the world that a thing happened. You just you think it's like a cool thing. And then is there a difference between a, and I think we said there's a difference between a professional and an expert. A professional does it for other people is organized. Uh, it takes all the time to set up all the other stuff other than just hey call me up and I want to wander around your house and then you do nothing with it. And then a, a ghost hunter, I, I feel like it's just somebody that's going to go chase ghosts. Like they're going to show up at your house. If you call them and they've probably got a couple of gadgets and they're going to do something, but then they're not going to do like anything with that. They're not going to have cases that they compare it to or build a portfolio off of it or um, do anything useful with the information. If you did experiments like the movie Sliders or Experts and After... Say, talk louder. Uh, uh, so. Maybe if you did experiments like the movie Sliders. I thought Sliders was a show and they went to alternate dimensions. It is. Are you thinking Flatline? Or no. Uh, I absolutely want to do Flatline. Flatliners are experts on After Death. I've done years of experience, Emilio. You have to align your chakra with the base aura and have a crystal of copper in order to ghost hunt. That no, is, that's just how you get the facts. portal device to work. You you glue, you glue a crystal in that, front of it. At that last event we went to, I could have sat in that movie theater all night when no one knew I was there just listening to those people play with that portal. That was the most entertaining thing I have witnessed in all of the ghost hunting time. Uh, the, ne- the next thing on the agenda is actually equipment used, expertise <laughs> listed, and experience. I, th- I, think th- I think that was more in reference to what we use, what expertise we claim and, and stuff, but it's also compared to what other people use. That's, and those portal things, they, they uh, Stephen Huff makes them, and I can't stand them. I, I don't like. And Emilio uses one too, so I'll pick on him. They make me well, happy. Well, he, he doesn't use a, he doesn't use a portal, but he does use the little echo pedal thing, uh, which makes it sound ghostly. 
and I th- I think he I think he said, and you might correct me since you're actually a listener today, is that with it echoing, it makes it easier to to hear it, so you can like decipher it because it kind of draws it out. I can kind of get that, but Steve Huff started using it because it made it sound spooky. But also, Amelia doesn't show up with a bunch of freaking like crystals super glued to the side of it. He all. <laughs> Oh my god, that was the best thing. We were we were at uh one of the Paracons and it was one of the other groups and they brought their portal out. And they glued a bunch of quartz to it. Yeah. And and there's like copper that runs from one section to what's really cool about that device is Steve Huff says the ghost told him how to build it. Oh yeah, uh, Emilio says I try to get rid of the static frequency switching. I don't care about spooky sound. Oh, uh he uses the uh uh, the uh, compressor pedal for that so that you don't have to sit there and listen to the static. I think that cuts out oh, some of the signal. For yeah. the, the, you know, is that the thing I hate with the ghost box? They, the, yeah, God, yeah. I hate that. So he's using kind of, he's kind of using a, a bastardized version of something somebody else is doing. Ooh, it was just great. Yeah, I mean, take what somebody else is doing and make it better if it's stupid, which Steve Huff's thing is stupid. Um, because Steve Huff's thing is a word bank. It's it's not it's not the and what he's doing and kind of what we do. I don't really run it through an amp, but it's the the Frank's box or the Ghost box yeah. or the SB seven. So it's scanning through radio frequencies. And what he's doing is he's he's filtering out all the static so that the only thing that comes through is when it hits words. So uh. all you get is the words, and it makes it kind of sound like the word bank. But it's not pre. It's not okay, something I, supposed I guess to. I pull. didn't know there was a difference. But yeah, the yeah. word bank stuff cracks me up, and that's what they were doing in the theater. That's exactly yeah, and, and that that's what the the uh, the portal device is, and everyone gets off. Hey, he says this was the ovulus. <laughs> no, I don't. <laughs> um, but it was because the ovulus. We so were much. in the that's movie, the first word bank one. We were in the movie theater, and they had like this little balcony. That you could like look down on the theater. Wait, what was that? What was that part of the balcony? At? What was that used for? It used to be a day? crying room. I thought for like you know they have one at the Omni, a crying room where you explain can like, it. Explain it. Uh, it's a glass in place. You I actually know. I'm take, playing or, or the whatever, audience member. Take uh, you think you think very little of our audience members. Shut up. You can take your crying baby in there so other people don't have to listen to your obnoxious shitty kids. Yeah, you don't have to leave the theater. There's like a room where you can you can still watch the movie while you're. But while they you're, turned it into like a date room, so they'd taken all the glass out, but we could like look down and watch these people like ghost hunt. But they sat there for two hours playing with that portal thing, just. Crapping out random words, and every time it says anything, they're like, "Oh, well, I mean, I know that's true because completely made." Yeah, up yeah, story. they 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 string together this like story based on the randomness that comes and, out, and like there's no there's no story. They're just making stuff up. Well, and that's how we met the unseen paranormal team too, because they read my. I was talking to, about um, uh, ghost detectors or whatever, and they had actually uh, they had done something similar where they took one of the word banks. And they looked at the programming for it to see how it worked, and they pissed off the person that made it because it, they basically proved. Oh yeah, that it that's was, uh, that was uh, anyway group from the north. But they, I liked that they had gone through and actually like looked. I thought that was a really smart like thing. Yeah, to do. yeah. and we had done the same thing, but I it, I didn't like publish like a thing about it. It was just basically all the phone apps. It's were, also immediately less cool if you do it. Oh, yeah. Than if someone else does it. Yeah, no, that's true. They uh, pioneered that. <laughs> Amelia, wait, wait. What's the problem with the ovulus? <laughs> What's the problem with the ovulus? I think it's fun. I... Well, so what it is is it's instant gratification for people that don't like Okay, so let me lay this evidence. out for you. Okay. I started ghost hunting, and I was having a real blast with it. And then this guy shows up, and he's like, all this fun you're having, no more of that. These fun toys, they all <laughs> suck. We're not allowed to use those. This is working. Oh, so. No more breaking and entering for you. We're going to do this legit. And then I was like, oh, you've sucked every ounce of fun out of the crimes I've been committing every weekend. But talk about your experience with the Ovulus specifically. Was that, okay, so it was the... Haiti came down. Yeah, we Haiti came we down. were at the um, Alton Bridge. Like, I, it was hard because that was one of those nights I really wasn't feeling good back when I was, like, really sick. Right. But I know that I, it was a separate one. Like, uh, she handed it to me, and it was, like, a little 
like a phone, but it only did the one thing. Yeah, yeah. It was an obvious. It was an obvious too, is what it was. So I thought to myself, okay, first off, we're assuming ghosts are like old, right? And like this technology is really new. So first off, how would they know how to work it? So I just started tapping the screen with my hand. To see if you could work it. To see if I could work it. And I could not. I could tap it and a word would come out. But it, I couldn't, no matter what I did or what pattern I hit, it was never a word I wanted to be. There was no pattern. There was no... It, it, it was completely random. I could hit it seven times and it would pop out the word effective. Then I could hit it two more and it would pop out stab. It just... No pattern. No sense. Um, it was frustrating because I, then I thought to myself, like, how would a ghost right. work if I can't in, work in, like, in, I understand the concept. Like, it manipulates an energy in a certain way and it gets something out of the library. Okay, that's fine. How would, how would it learn to do that over the course of an investigation? If like, I, I, I tapped on that thing for three hours. I mean, I could sit there with, like, you know, a battery or some kind of static field generator and, and I could manipulate energy into patterns like with science but i could still not get i could still not make it spit out a specific <laughs> sentence like okay let's so, say it's 50 years from now and people are ghost hunting and it's people our age or like younger that are dead like technology technology natives like maybe we would have some like let, 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 we're assuming ghosts are dead people right now which isn't what i believe but whatever let's let's assume right. that <laughs> let's assume that they probably died prior to you know 2010 when this stuff all became so popular and like everyone had it it became just so pervasive how would they know how to work any of this technology right well and, and there's no and okay so even if there is some like higher level intelligence working where I build this ridiculous machine and it, it does know how to operate operate it you still have no way of confirming any of the information because you're getting one and two word responses off of it. You're connecting all these dots. There, there's there's no there's no way to uh, positively confirm that it is uh, an entity that is interacting with that because there's so many random. Well, and maybe electrical... Emilio can answer this, but are you thinking they're like doing it with their mind? Or are they like thinking a word? And because they're like at the base of what most ghost hunters think, they're electricity. Are they able to now work that because they have some sort of. But us <sighs> as engineers building. So I, I can tell you what's inside that. They were Star ob- Trek fans. Uh, I, I can tell you what's inside that ovulus box. And it's there's there's basically a circuit board. And this is the separate box, not like the app for the phone. Yeah, oh, supposedly they work off the same principle, but they can't because the hardware is not in the phone. That's what they don't want to tell you. But what's in that ovulus box is um, it's basically an EMF detector, and an EMF detector is basically just a big capacitor connected to a battery. And a capacitor, what it does um, is it stores electricity, and then it releases electricity. And an EMF detector and the ovulus, what it does is it measures how much energy is in that capacitor at any given point in time. And then it, it gives you some kind of result based off of that. The ovulus takes it a step further where it has a, a, a computerized word bank on basically like a chip and a memory card in there. And based on how much energy is in that capacitor, in, in that, seri- and I'm way oversimplifying, there's a couple other things, but based on how much energy uh, and and how much uh, magnetism is involved in there, it spits out a word. But me is, okay, so somebody has to invent that and create that. That means somebody has to know how to program specific words for, for specific amounts of energy. So if a ghost or entity is just thinking a word and then touches it and it spits out, I would have to know how to program that to make the right word. In, and which Emilio means makes a, human- a good point, though. Like, to see any device doesn't work is bad investigating because we don't know what we're doing. And that's true. Like, we can't prove it the other way. My question is more, how are we assuming the ghost is making this spit out work? Or is it just completely, like, like let's say the ghost can't get it to pop out a, fir- uh, a certain word. And the ghost is just tapping it over and over. And the ghost is getting really frustrated because they didn't want to say stab. They wanted to say howdy. Like <laughs> I would believe that more then anything coming through that box on is purpose. is on purpose, like legitimate. Yeah, I th- I think you could 
run a light bulb across a, a go in, you know they randomly make it light up but like they didn't necessarily want to or didn't know how they were yeah. doing it it's it, it i mean it's no more legitimate than going out there with a whoopee cushion well, I, Catherine says it seems a lot like jumping to conclusions to make them relevant response. And like I've heard some that they do sound like relevant responses. Sometimes it really does. And it'll have a string of time where it spits out what seems like relevant responses. So there's there's two things with equipment and instrumentation that I try to drill into everybody's head. First off, if you're using an instrument, um, you really need to know what that instrument is measuring and exactly how it works to, to have a good understanding of it. Like if I'm a contractor and, you know, I'm trying to measure for a door and I don't really understand how a tape measure works, then everything I do from then on is just completely tainted by that. And he's right. You can't say, you can't say, oh, the, the tape measure doesn't work just because you don't understand how it works. But once you get an understanding of it, then you can definitely know, oh, shit, it's missing uh, the one inch mark. You know, in throwing off all my results. The the second thing is, is repeatable data. Because if you go out with like this EMF device and you don't know, you're going to get hits everywhere you go, but you don't think every single hit is a, is paranormal activity. And there, there's no consistency to it. So there's no consistency to the words that you're getting. There's no consistency to some of the EMF stuff. Because it's all based on... Well, and Amelia says, as an investigator, you would accept an anomaly on voice recorder, but not an anomaly on another. So, the, but the thing is, like with that, and I, I, I'm not like arguing. I'm saying I understand how a ghost could say something and a recorder picks it up. I can even grasp sort of why we wouldn't hear that. But how? It, so, like, uh, Emilio, do you think the ghost is popping out relevant responses? Or do you think they're trying to work this thing, don't know how, and the responses are just signs there are a ghost, not of what it wants to say specifically? Did that make sense? Yeah, it, I mean, it makes sense to me. I hope it makes I don't know. Sense I hope it makes sense. Because, yeah, um, I'm but, curious. But I, I do, okay, to an extent, I do accept things over a recorder more than I do out of a word bank. Because the word bank it's pre-generated by that computer, right? And all you have to do is touch it and you you get the speak and spell thing. And anybody anybody can do that and that can be caused by anything. It could be just because you walked through a magnetic field. You don't know. With the recorder, you do get false positives too. But we take an... Ex so I don't believe every single thing I get on a recorder over that, but there are things you can do to validate what's on the, to me, there are things you can do to validate what's on the recorder. There's nothing you can do to validate what's on the word well, bank. I, that, that's the difference. I guess if it said something on the word bank and you got it on recorder, that would make it more valid. Or if you got a, like a whole sentence on the word bank thing that was like pertinent to the investigation. Well, okay, so there's that. But you're getting one and two word responses, and, and you can argue that on the EVP, right? So so the ovulus gives you a one or two word response that you, you really have to think about, and you're like, okay, that's kind of relevant. But it could still be random and a coincidence. When you get it on an EVP, yeah, the response you're getting could be uh, relevant, and it could still just be a coincidence. But how did those words get on? And that's what you're validating is the mechanic by which it happened. It's If you can rule out that a human did it, if you can rule out that it's RF frequencies, which you do with Faraday, cage. Well, like Emilio just said, location pins, if it, the word bank is silent for hours and then spits out a relevant response, then it's quite... Yeah, no, I, 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 think, I think he's got a point. And he derailed this on purpose, just by the by. He thinks this is funny. Oh, okay. Um, I wouldn't trust a word bank that is constant, randomly active. Well, and I trust, like... I hate to say it, but like I trust Emilio to use the devices that we crap on more than I trust other people. It also depends on the, yeah, I agree with that. It depends on the hands that it's in because I, I feel like, okay, if you go out with a word bank and you're extremely skeptical of it, I mean, we've thrown word banks out there. I'm not saying don't do well, and it. And I've never seen P Emilio play string the completely random inane words together. I've never seen him or yeah. Carlos do that. I, it's just knowing, okay, so it, some some of the argument is like in my head and I don't know how to flesh it out, but in, in we're on like word banks versus uh, just digital recorders or analog recorders. 
is what we got derailed to. But knowing how the technologies work is what's playing into my my absolute distrust of any word bank things. So especially the ones on the phone, because we've pulled the programming apart on at least five of the like most popular ones. And they are absolutely set in the program to give random responses like not from there's nothing that will trigger them. It just it spits stuff out after a while on an um, algorithm. I think you should read what Ali said. Is the word bank just words from our century? Maybe someone should create one that has words that would be relevant to the time which the ghost would have lived and used. Maybe they don't know our slang. I mean, that's a good point. Why is there an ant on my screen? I need to spray. That poor ant is not hurting you. Um... You're you don't be a freaking murderer, but no, like I I don't know like but if you could type it out, Emilio, like what is your best guess on how the ghosts are working the um the word bank thing? So are you thinking they think it in their head, or do you think they like have some like do you think they have some more knowledge because they're like dead or like because they're more electrical based than we? I, I don't know how to word it, but I'm very curious as to what the prevalent thought is on how because I tried to make it work and I couldn't that's why I'm right. so curious about that I guess I need to google it I, I, I guess what you're asking is can can a spirit ghost entity operate it better than us because yeah. it's made of energy and we are meat sacks yeah that's the that's, is, yeah, is that that's the difference better, yeah um which I don't think Spirits are free. It's a personal opinion. I don't think spirits are free floating energy because entropy. Uh, I don't either, but it, that's it, what it a lot of work. these things are based on. Right, right. And, and it, okay. And so running on the theory that that is somehow possible, um, you're still just passing it through a, a field of uh, intelligent energy that can uh, alter its state or whatever. But it still wouldn't have a reliable way to interact with the uh, digital equipment that is inside those digital dowsing uh, word banks. Mm -hmm. that, that's what the problem is. And then with a recorder, yes, it is just as easily contaminated, but there are steps you can take to validate the results you're getting. There is nothing you can do on the ovulus other than free association with the history of the place to validate anything you're getting there. Or it could say something and then you could be like, say that again. And it never does. It's, I don't, it's it, ha it doesn't for us. That doesn't mean it never has. For I don't know. I don't know anybody that's got a full sentence out of it or any kind of repeatable data. Uh, and if they have, I would really like to see it because I like the word big. I, f I just find it fun. Like, but, um, Catherine says some recordings are definitely people contaminating the listener to hear what the investigators want you to hear. Oh, yeah. Like uh, she's talking about those phrases that if you're thinking something in your head, it'll say one thing. And if you're thinking the other word, it'll say the other. Like the, paradelia. Like yeah. the blue and or sorry, the white and gold dress, but with words. Black and gold. <laughs> but like with words. Um but yeah, that's why we stopped saying what we thought we heard before we would play the right. uh, EVP clip. Uh, Emilio says, energy can't be created or destroyed, so the ghost must be some sort of energy, uh, so they may have a better understanding of how it works. Okay, thinking they are energy, then they would be able to manipulate energy the same way we manipulate matter. Okay, so that way, that does make sense, some sense to me. Right, okay, so if you, if you. you subscribe to that, okay. I'm I'm bar I'm I'm putting aside Newton's laws for a minute, but okay. So energy can exist; it can be intelligent; it can manipulate energy the same way that we manipulate matter. So it'd be able to do that. I just don't think it can interact with that particular tool in that way because we can't. Like to make a tape measure, you have to know how big an inch is, and, and where to put them, and what order to put the numbers in. We would have absolutely no way to write that because we don't operate on the same wavelength that uh, an entity like that would. So it would literally have to sit the, it, for that to work. It would have to, if your word bank's got 200,000 words in it, it would have to go through all 200,000 words 
over the course of your eight hour yeah, investigation. The investigations don't last long enough or right. maybe it's because let's assume this, we're really deep into theory here, but maybe if other ghost groups have gone out there, it's learned right. something yeah, from... over and over and over and over and over. But then the, the responses on the ovulus should get more relevant over time. Maybe they are and we're missing out. I, I don't I, I don't think so. I think what we should do to debunk the thing is we need someone to make a word bank that's like ten words. And and I like I like Allie's approach to it is uh what what uh diction are they using? And yeah, most of it I see is just mo- basic modern English words. Uh, I, I know, but you can program your own people the, that are. The ghost just said this investigation is straight fire. What? Um, <laughs> what I think would actually be a hundred percent more interesting than a pre-generated word bank, which is basically a dictionary, and it opens this digital dictionary and points to words it wants mm-hmm. to use, is something that generated syllables. But that we saw that that uh, Haiti had that too. Mm. Yeah, yeah, I haven't I haven't seen that. But it was the thing, and it would it would just pop out syllables, and it would like string together words. And I would imagine, like when it runs in a random energy, it's going to make nonsense words that don't exist, like oh, bah, do, da, bah, bah. Um, But it would be really interesting if you got a full sentence out of. How something do you not like remember? That. I don't remember who had that thing, but someone had one where it was basically build a word. Yeah, uh, I think that would be really interesting. And if anybody knows what that device is, yeah, uh, phonetically, Catherine. But I would definitely like someone to make a because because then because then it wouldn't be bound by languages or or any of the the meaning of the words that are in there. Like you could get a Nokian over it or something. If it works, it would be beyond our understanding. We might as well be saying the sun orbits the earth. That's the extent of our knowledge. We know something is happening, but have no real way to document it. And there's the frustration, man. <laughs> but you're making an argument that we are creating a tool. That we don't know how function you're you're making a but, a theoretical box. Okay, so that, that's my problem. Let's say we did create a tool, and for some reason it was someone hit on the right thing. Like, I don't know, I don't know anything. I'm dumb. Like, for all I know, Ghost did tell him how to build it. I mean, like somebody invented a knife because they needed to cut something late. So now we're just like inventing things. We have no clue how they work or why we're making them, but we're still putting them out. <laughs> yeah, that's exactly that's a, that's why I disagree with that as any kind of legitimizing tool. There was an Oculus that wasn't a word bank, but it was the same thing. You hear what you want to hear. I don't know. The build a word one was interesting because like most of it was gibberish, but it was super exciting when it popped out a full word. I mean, I get what he's saying, and I'm not, I'm not crapping on like. Well, I am a, I, I, I am, and I'm not. I'm not saying don't go out and use a word bank. I'm, I'm not. Sorry, I'm not Emilio. saying it's completely. He brought it up, and he knew better. Uh, Did he? It's yeah. It's totally possible that that could run into some energy, and if something's smart, that it could it could pop out specific words somehow. But there is no, there is no underst- there is no understanding or no cohesive argument that you can make that says that this is happening consistently. And and accurately. The other problem is is that like I like I can go in my room and go build one. Like I, I do understand what the electronics are in there. And why I, don't you build one that only has ten words so we can like? But but then but what if the word it wants to use isn't on there? Does it select a word that's on there or does it just not interact with it? We don't know because we can't ask it a freaking question. Uh, Emilio says we are using current technology, not designed for this purpose. We are Bulbazar doing our best. <laughs> I'm not sure if that's what was supposed to be typed out, but that's a Pokemon. Uh, Bulbasaur. Di- I think he meant dinosaurs. I, but Bulbasaur is kind of. Bulbasaur. I, I was always. about the Pokemon. Poor uh, Bulbasaur. I know. <laughs> what did he ever do? Well, I'm being skeptically open minded open to the possibility but i will still debunk them in a heartbeat and that's why i like i'm like oh i don't like the word big things but i trust you with them but i've seen how other people oh, yeah, yeah. interact and, with them and, and he's purposely poking Pulpazar does his best 
We need that shirt. <laughs> Bulbasaur. <laughs> and he's like hunting ghosts or something. <laughs> yes, please. We need merch. And that's the only merch. Just that one shirt. <laughs> that and the stupid goat logo that we used. Because <laughs> Yo- a goat showed up one time. Okay, sorry. But uh, but yeah, he's poking me to play. Do- I, I get that. But and, that is the thing, though, is that we've seen how other people interact with these. It's also the difference between our group and other groups where they're going to have an experience. They're, they are looking to have an experience. We, so am I. We, but we are also <laughs> looking for legitimate evidence. And we, okay, say the stupid thing works. I, I'll flip sides for a minute. Okay, it works. Uh oh, a white guy playing devil's advocate. <laughs> Great. Um, but we can't prove it. I can't prove it on that side of the aisle. So it's not scientific, legitimate evidence, which is my goal. May not be your goal, but that's my goal. So the word bank for me, does, it doesn't work for that. If you want to go hunt ghosts with it, go hunt ghosts with it. I get it. You, but you will always be a ghost hunter to you me. You have a serious problem with word banks. They give you rage. They do, because I prove them wrong time and time and time again. And I'm sure the ovulus nonsense, also, if I could get into the... If I if I wanted to pay the $150 to get one, and I cracked it open and I got into the PCU of it, I guarantee 100% that it has an algorithm that it spits words out on. Well, Emilia says, I'm stirring conversation on a device that a lot of people put faith in. Obvious is a very sought after device for almost every group. And my problem isn't even the device. It's when we were in that theater watching the people interact with it. With not, not even just having fun with it, but putting their faith in it because believing stuff because, because things are marketed as ghost detectors and people assume if it's marketed that way, it's, legitimate so that somebody figured out what a ghost is and this thing detects ghosts but nobody has done that they're they're putting out these this stuff that does stuff and even if they're being honest about it they just have a theory about what a ghost is and this emf that you're detecting is a ghost but emf detectors are not ghost detectors emf detectors are emf EMF detectors. detectors Um, um, yeah. Okay. So back to the group we were watching in the theater. Mm-hmm. So this was in Mineola, whatever, but it was like watching an exercise in like forced mass hysteria. Absolutely. Cause they come in calm in a small group and they start playing with their portal or whatever. It may as well be a Ouija board. And they're getting these random words. It starts spitting out words immediately. Like mm-hmm. Emilio said, that's something that he wouldn't believe, but it starts spitting out words immediately. But you could run into a ghost immediately. A, There's a mile a minute, it is putting out these words, and they're making up these stories to validate it, and they're stringing words together that make no sense even being on the same planet as each other. <laughs> and then it starts ramping up. It starts staying like murder and, st- and all this, and they're ramping up. And you watch them get anxious, and then I watch them jump and go, Oh, something just touched me. And then someone mm-hmm. else go, Oh, something just touched me. And it's it's like watching just forced mass hysteria. Well, and it's interesting because we were watching as a third party that had already been there a few hours. Um and when they didn't know we were there is the other thing. Oh, I know, I know. But we had been we had been in those areas a few hours and investigated and done stuff and got no results. Anything. And we were and watching it as a third party. Like we're and and not a part of that and not uh, digging into that hysteria. We can see like how they were reacting. Like because you were sitting on the stage. Yeah, I like, said the they dark. didn't know like for the longest, and then they were like, "Oh my god, is that is that a person over there?" So they literally did not know I was there because I wanted right. to listen when they didn't know I was there. Which I get, I guess it's creepy or whatever. But I felt like if they knew we were there, they'd act different. Yeah, absolutely. So yeah, I just oh, we got to be professional. In that. Or uh, opposite, we've got to like make up a bunch of stuff so we look cool. Oh yeah, yeah. I don't know, but I it was I like the psychology of it. It's very interesting, but the way they ramped themselves up, it just it made no sense, and it was very frustrating to watch because I feel like they believed it hard enough that now they're going to go home and they're going to have experiences and their house is going to be haunted and. Like, I, I feel like they were setting themselves up for, like, a big psychological just screw up. Well, in and, and Catherine and Emilio are having a, a side conversation here, too, about where 
basically she's saying maybe believing in the entity and interacting with the in- entity gives it more energy so that it actually can. And, and that's, man, that's one of the double edged swords about a lot of these theories is uh, because they intersect at a point where it's, um, it only exists as if it's observed in, in Emilio and I'm quoting Emilio here cause he's talking, he's talking about quantum theory, but it only exists when it's observed, but it doesn't exist if it's not observed. So what what's the point at which it's real or not? Because if as a as a third party, as an objective viewer of paranormal activity, if we don't observe it, then we say it's not there. But people interact with it and it happens. Is it really there or is it them? There, there's photon, an argument for both. If a photon blasts through a bottle full of water and no one's around to see it, does it? <laughs> it's really a Schrodinger's cat. Does it pop cat? into yeah. another dimension? Yeah. I don't know. Um, it's also a Schrodinger's cat argument where it's both in a state of dead and alive at the same time. There's a cat in a box. There's a radioactive ice. Sorry. <laughs> it's, it's first, I was so little when I watched Prince of Darkness, but that first scene always stuck with me where he's talking about the cat in the box. Because right, yeah. I'm like five or six watching this going, why is it killing a cat? I love every why movie. Why is the cat going to ha- die? <laughs> I love every movie that has quantum physics in it because they have to go to Schrodinger's cat because it's one of the easiest concepts to understand quantitative state. See, I, I read Timeline. By uh, oh, that's a, Crichton, that which is, is just ninety percent sketches of quantum physics. I got through half that, and I was like, "This is, this is terrible." Um. Okay. So equipment that we use, we also use uh, all the ghost hunting equipment, but usually we're using it as like a novelty to kind of, um. So we use other meth like okay. Say we're using an. I don't own an ovulus, but we do have. We've gone out with word banks. But then I also put like another piece of equipment beside it and uh, we're recording uh, with uh, video and audio and things like that because we're trying to get correlating data uh, among all these devices. And uh, universally what we find out is that anything that's marketed is like a ghost device immediately just start. It, it, it's always like. It, oh, like the boo bear and all that. Stuff. Yeah, yeah. It never disappoints. It always gets something. But. The other stuff that's just normal, that just measures like the environment, and I guess I can expand on that in a second, never capture, doesn't always capture something at the same time. And the reason, here's the thing, if there's something interacting with those devices and make it, even, even the word bank, because we're saying there's energy that interacts with that device, right? That has to infect, affect the environment somehow which would mean it should also set off an EMF detector. It should also set off uh, a camera or something else that just measures the environment should also be able to detect it because the thing that the, the word bank is measuring, the ovulus is measuring, is also measurable by just a regular old device also. That's what the problem with it is. And it doesn't, it doesn't always trigger. That's why I don't trust that item specifically. Digital electronics is getting in the way. What happened to analog analysis? Sound is pressure, wave, EMF is waves. Could there be a common overlapping thread? Um, I mean, I also use like analog recording and things like that. Um, I don't think I don't think digital is getting in the way, but I think it's muddying the water for people that don't understand technology. They don't understand that it's contaminated in different ways that analog audio is or analog video is. It's which, like my grandma with her iPhone when she told it, it she hated it and it said that's not very nice and she freaked out because she didn't understand how phones work. Yeah. It's it's the same thing. We're doing the same thing. Yeah. Um, you know, it, the, the only real difference between uh, the way analog technology records as opposed to digital technology records is going to be magnets. Um, you know, cause tape magnetic, it's, <laughs> I don't want to get too far into it, but basically their, uh, tape reels are based off of magnetism and it's recording that data in an analog format where digital is, um, literally taking the image or the audio and it's translating it through a processor. Um, it's actually more accurate, but it can, it's just contaminated in a different way. When I first, so when me and Allie were first ghost hunting, I can date myself because digital recorders didn't exist. 
we had to use my dad had given me one of those micro like cassette tape recorder thingies. And that's what we used because I started ghost hunting so long ago. Digital recorders weren't in existence yet. Yeah. I was still sporting a Walkman. Um, the other thing uh, Amelia is talking about, you and we do this too, he, using a cassette recorder to, to yeah. do uh, EVPs. But you also have to be careful with that because the motors and the magnets inside the uh, the recorders and, and everything you're using, those cause uh, uh, electromagnetic but waves that set off your we, other... That me and you were trying to chase down this EMF. And we had created some sort of triangle with all our devices mm -hmm. that if you walked into it, it was going off because it was me, you and my dad. It must have been the Hood County Jail. Yeah. It was the yeah, County yeah. Jail. Oh, yeah. And also the way the other thing is, is where the staircase is and the way the walls are. It, it actually bounces a lot of those fields in these weird directions. So you'll catch it. And unless you know what you're doing and, and you're doing your perimeters like we were doing, then it looks more random than it actually is and you can't trace it down. But yeah, you got to be careful. Like uh, we have to be very careful where Don is with the camera because he'll absolutely, the camera will set off all the EMF devices. In it. We, it was okay. Like our second episode, we railed on that Canadian group, the leader Ben or whatever, mm -hmm. because he put the video out. After ragging on my ghost setting technique, he put the video out where he's sitting at his computer and pointing the EMF detector at it going, see, the ghost followed me home. Look, it's going off. And he's literally sticking it to the computer. And I was like, oh, my God. Yeah, he, he was saying the footage that they captured was haunted. haunted, but he was picking up the EMFs off his LCD screen. It's just funny and, how many people will like just wave it in front of electronics and be like, oh, there's a right. ghost. Well, and uh, Catherine sent me a really good video. I need to share it, actually. She sent me a really good uh, video that it never occurred to me to like make before, but showing how electricity actually travels, like through power lines and things like that, because a lot of people think it's contained inside that wire, and that's 100% not how that works. And I, I kind of, like, he explained it way better than I did. Um but basically you have... Uh, yeah, because I don't know any of this. So um, you, you have positrons and ele you have yeah. electrons, right? And like, okay, so you have the positive end of the battery and negative end of the battery and it goes through a circuit, right? Yeah. So you think the electricity is doing this, right? Through the wire. That's not actually what happens. The positrons and electrons are actually moving back and forth. It, it's the difference between uh, direct current and alternating current, right? And it does this and it, it builds up like a friction almost but they're not actually going like in and out. it's not like a circuit like it's like you would think like a train it's like somebody shaking a bunch of sand in a hula hoop and as it builds that up the electrical charge the wave is actually traveling on the outside of the the cable so that's like when you walk out there you can hear the buzz yeah, or whatever or feel it like uh the, remember old school tvs when you put your hand in front of the That's screen. exactly it. So did you ever take a light bulb and hold it up to the front of the TV? No. It'll light the light bulb Really? Up. I just felt, I like feeling so it with my hand. If, I like if the way you, it felt. Yeah, if you take a light bulb and you go hold it up to a power line, when you get like three or four feet from the power line, it'll light up the light bulb because that's where the actual electricity like moves, right? And it's constantly doing that. The problem is, is that's how it moves across our entire planet. So you're always going to get these electromagnetic waves everywhere. And it, it doesn't matter how much shielding you use. And the way we just... That's why the rate of brain tumors is so high because uh, there's 5G. electricity every... Five, not 5G. I said electricity. <laughs> That's different. This conspiracy theory is different. Don't debunk me. It, it's funny how we discovered that because uh, the people that... Uh, when we ran the uh, transatlantic line like way back in the day when we were doing telegraphs or whatever it wouldn't work because they didn't they didn't understand that the water was stopping the flow of electricity because they're like oh well the positrons and electrons are, are moving through the cable should get to the other end but the signal would get to the other end and it was all like slower like it was weird and they couldn't figure it out and it's because the actual signal the current that that carries that information was on the outside and the water was like blocking it it, it was insul it was insulating so bad it didn't work so that's why your power lines are run across the poles 
because if you bury them, the electricity doesn't travel anywhere. If you bury power lines instead of putting them on poles and suspending them in the air, you're... I thought there were buried power lines. There are buried data lines, and it's it's for shorter periods where you don't need a strong signal, but if you want to get it from the power company to your house, it's got to be carried over... And they also use these like glass insulator caps too. And Catherine says that's why Faraday cages make equipment boring. <laughs> True. Yeah, because it blocks out the random signals that you would get. <sighs> Unless the ghost is in the cage. That's the point. If you're talking to a ghost, it would be with you inside the cage with you, and then you would still get the result. And that is 100% why Faraday cages are awesome. You're also the guy that detuned our ghost boxes. Yes. So now they don't do anything. Uh, we got a result. We got one at the jail. I was sitting in the room with my dad, cross-legged, like just sitting on the floor, and it popped out a word, and I was like, oh my God, it, it happened. It's finally taught, and then it never did it again. All right, let's move on from equipment for a little bit. No. Uh, ethics, ethical practices, investigation, <laughs> transparency. No. Are these things important with professional investigators? Absolutely at all? not. And and if what they if they it? are, what does that look like? What are the ethics of a paranormal investigator? It looks look like, like not robbing their house when they leave you alone in it. Really? Is that are you just joking? Yeah. Okay. Um can you not tell <sighs> No, I can't. Sometimes I forget to do face stuff when I make jokes so people know I'm not being serious. I love winding you up. Poorly and correctly designed digital electronics may induce noise and harmonics, which could throw off interpretation of the signal's uh, voice interpretation. Detuning just shortens the range. Doesn't disable reception. Well, yeah, because then the theory was like the ghosts have to be like right here talking. like, And we were also oh, yeah, picking yeah, up I, radio. But anyway, uh, ethics. Uh, but I also, I also not only detune, but we, ethics are we silly. isolate. And I've, I've also completely pulled out the, not just, I didn't just pull the antenna off. I actually pulled the, the radio, the, the copper wiring for the tuner out. It has to directly contact the, anyway. So, ethics. Oh, um, so, I mean, as an investigator, what do ethics actually look like? I mean, because, like you said, like, we can't, you can't sell a product like ethics look like not going into someone's house, telling them their two year old is being haunted by a demon and that if they burn their thousands of dollars in Disney paraphernalia, they'll be better. But it's debatable because that guy believed that I because th- he didn't get paid. So that's what fours me about that is he did not get paid for what he did. He ruined these people's lives for free. Yeah, uh, because he he believed in it. He thought he had some knowledge that they don't have and that he was some kind of expert. But I don't think he. I don't think he practices uh, ethical. I guess if you believe that, that is ethical for him. He thought he was helping. I don't know. Yeah, I, I mean, to the to the point in my head is, I'm never going to say something is going on that I either don't believe is actually going on, or that if if I really can't prove it to a full extent, then I, everything I say is going to be some kind of like theorized thing. It's but, like, it makes sense in some arguments. Like, I don't want to bring up a political one, but that's the only really good example I have. So I'm just going to bump past it. But um, if you believe fully, completely, that that kid is being haunted by a demon, then eth- ethically get, you have to do something. And about if it, but, if you think that burning the Disney stuff is what they have to do, it actually be unethical for you to not do it. I know, so it's really rough because we're all talking about a field where nobody has uh, a definitive answer. And it's at this point, it is all conjecture and all opinion based on some kind of experience you had. But, you know, honestly, I think anybody that uh, is going to do residential investigations should be have to do uh, psych evaluations from a third party, not, not invested in what they're doing. Even us, too. Um, Oh, Catherine says we're ethical. I I think I think we are. We try to be. I I, th- I think tr- I think transparency. I, I think I think I'm I'm starting to move away from it because like what you said is absolutely right. I think I'm moving away from the idea that um, there's this 
book of ethics that needs to be put on all investigators and it needs to be transparency is what everybody needs. How did you come to the conclusion that you came to? What do you really know about the equipment that you're using to do this? Um, what religious beliefs do now, you what, have what, as are, the investigator? That's the thing. Are your religious beliefs infecting what you're doing here? Yeah. yeah. Are, are you actually being objective? I, I think if you're not being ob- objective and not being transparent about, I'll get a second opinion. Yeah. I say ethics start with the client, not putting themselves in that position. I, I yeah, you know, um, it came up uh, a few years ago because I had mentioned that I do background checks on our clients. Um, for the simple fact, I don't want to go to somebody's house and get stabbed, or I don't want somebody to lure me out to their house and me get robbed. Well, like, and it what, was my- what I wanted to do for a while is I wanted us to get background checks right. and yeah. have them like with us Yeah, yeah. so we can go... Because I would be really uncomfortable letting a random person exactly. In my house. Yeah, they had a case forever ago where paramedics were robbing people when they went into their house. To, yeah. Like, what a horrible freaking thing to do! Like, but it, so why would they trust us if you can't even trust a medical worker? Yeah, and I don't, I don't know if somebody handed me their their background check that I would trust because they could write their own background check. I don't know, but I do encourage people to do background checks on us, like. Hey, go talk to our past clients. Uh, here, here's a list. Uh, or, or, you know, a lot of them want to be anonymous, but here's things we've done. Here's places we've. Here's professional places we've it's been. Basically, here's, like uh, here's my a, real name. Check up on me. It's basically like getting a house sitter. Yeah, you'd want to know they're not murderous or gonna rob you. I just yeah, um, and he, he transparency. I, I try to be transparent. Um, I do believe that people have the experiences they have when they call us and things like that, but I do background check them because I have heard of investigators going to somebody's house and then getting the shit kicked out because it wasn't even the, they were given an address and they went there and the people that were there waiting on them uh, that, that had called them out, they didn't own that house. They were just mugging because we carry around a lot of expensive equipment and things like that. Like if you, if you mug me, you're going to get away with a camera you can pawn for a pretty good amount of money and things like that. A way so, to announce it. I back, I background check. <laughs> Cause we were concerned too. When we went out to like light pan, like, Oh, we're about to get murdered. You know, that's when it dawned on me to start doing that too. Right after that, because uh, she's like, yeah, just meet us, at, meet me at this gas station and we're going to drive out to the middle of nowhere Five and we did it cattle cars. And, and my car almost got stuck out there forever and like who's gonna pay for that like there there was a lot of stuff going on i and thank god that worked out but we could have been very murdered <laughs> amelia's you never want to go to a ghost hunter and become the ghost, ghost I don't, <laughs> yeah i would i totally would that's still how i want to prove stone tape theory we've got to murder some people in a stone room it's a Disney demon. I'll get a second opinion. Yeah, and you know what? I like being the second opinion rather than the first. I like being the second group call. I think I have an episode in the future called When You're the Second one on the list. I like it better because somebody else has already gone in and given me a bunch of stuff to ref- to look at first. Yeah. You, you know what I mean? And it, it, makes, it makes our job you a lot like easier. You just like making people look dumb. We don't always, though. Okay. Uh, other people, well, I mean, every time we go to a public place where there's been a hundred ghost tours and, oh, and no, people have had claims either. or whatever, it, we go investigate. Th- we don't necessarily get them, but we don't rule out that that thing could have happened or whatever. But, like, yeah, the Disney demon thing, that that was a big deal because, like, those, you know what? It, it never felt so real until that moment because they were like, we're selling our house. Um, we got rid of all our kids' stuff. Things are bad. Like, I'm scared to go to sleep at night. I'm worried for my daughter's life. I'm going to lose my job. And we were like... They're like living in a trailer. Yeah, and and I, it's the first time where I was like, hey, this isn't just for fun. Like, this, this is maybe important. It's maybe important we pay attention to what we're doing. To the point, like, we stayed that first night, and we found what we found, but I was also thinking... Okay, is there anybody else I trust to come out and investigate this place if they don't like the answers I'm giving them? Because these people are like legitimately believing all this stuff that's going on. And 
it's funny because we we get beat up as the debunkers, but I've I've never felt more better going in and debunking a bunch of stuff and being only left with just a couple of things, and then the client just being absolutely ecstatic about that and, and like relieved because they were like, okay, I do believe in the paranormal and a couple of these things are weird, but I don't feel like this is is scary anymore. I that's also like uh, we came out of that. A ghost hunt and I was furious I looked up that guy that said all that mm-hmm. stuff I was so mad but then I sat back and thought about it and I was like oh shit he 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 didn't get paid he thought he was doing the right he thought he was helping and I they were talking about existential crises but that gave me a whole existential crisis yeah just like I, I, I can't even think he's a bad person I I can't even be mad at him like it's, well, I mean, what he was trying to do is he was trying to collect cases for a TV show because he wanted to be on TV. That, that's that's what the motive is at the end of the day. But on some people, their motive is that they literally think they're helping. I mean, this is the same guy that went to the Civil War Museum. and all. It, the, the thing that bothered me about that guy is every single place he went to has demons. Every place he goes to has demons. It's... It, well, Catherine says, what events happened that said my daughter might die from noise? Where it was, they were also having, I don't want to get too much into it. They were having like personality changes and they were seeing stuff, hearing stuff. It was, it was escalating rapidly. They were having like, they thought things were moving around and they got a video that, that scared them because, uh, that, that not a door cam video, but like one of those like little, uh, sits like on your fireplace or whatever. And they heard, and they saw, what they thought was like demonic feet or because they showed it to a friend and the friend said, Oh, it looks like goat hooves or whatever, which it, it didn't, but they, but because of that suggestion, they, they, the they had bought in. And when we, when we told them, Hey, this is what this is like, and this is how this happened. And they looked at it again. They're like, shit, you're, you're right. That like, was hysterical. Like in retrospect, cause the mom had like turned around and the kid had gone to sit down and then the kid runs back in and runs yeah, back out. It, it, and ran, it, it's literally a thing where somebody rang the doorbell and the kid runs this way, runs this way. The mom looks. And so the kid's not there, runs around the mini bar, runs around this way. And it's just out of view of the camera where all you can see is the just little feet, just the little feet. And it's kind of fuzzy. And the mom is swearing is like, it couldn't have been my kid because I looked and my kid was over there. And but, by the time she looked back, the kid was back over right, there. Right, because kids do weird I mean, stuff. I once and, almost called the cops because I thought Ender was missing and he was hiding in a laundry basket and falling asleep. So A lot of that stuff is all about perception <laughs> and what's going on at the time. Because what escalated up to that point is they they were already just feeling completely unnerved in that house anyway. Um, and it, it turned out, and it wasn't the only thing going on, but 90% of their problem was infrasound contamination from the air conditioning and the way the house was designed. As soon as, soon as all that was kind of brought up is, hey, do these things to kind of help battle your infrasound problem, then, then let's see where it goes from there. It solved 99% of everything that was going on in like the big banging they, they heard from the living room. We heard it. It the freaked us maker, out. Wasn't it? it was, it, it was unsecured lines behind the ice maker. Um, some of the smells that they were getting in the house was, uh, the stuff coming from the fireplace because they, they had something dead in the fireplace. I think it just, it's, it, there, there are a lot of things that you like, you wouldn't think to check. And when you put it together, it gets scary. It gets blown out of proportion. And then when somebody comes in and just validates that, yes, this stuff is paranormal, then it, that switch is flipped. And it's I, I'm real impressed with um, that residential because a lot of times once that switch is flipped, you can't unflip it anymore because you, you I could go and show them ever. You know, if I told them infrasound and if they if they didn't want to believe that they could have convinced themselves oh, yeah, that it, it wasn't that thing. A, a lot of times once you've convinced yourself something is paranormal you can't unconvince yourself about it i mean i with my mom's house i talked about in the last episode that i thought was haunted for so long and it turns out it was the ems even knowing that if she needs someone to like house sit her dog i won't go over there alone i won't go over there at night i won't go in the house alone even during the day well shit because there's also the pot 
And there, there's also the possibility that there's natural phenomena. And that's what I said. We can't always explain every single thing. Well, I'm just saying, I logically, I think that house is 100% not haunted. Right. But I still can't convince still, myself to walk into it. So, yeah, I see how once that switch is flipped, you're pretty much screwed. Yeah. It's, and um, I don't want to think it's haunted, but I ain't going in there by myself, man. I, I think the most ethical thing you can do as a paranormal investigator is pure transparency and um, working with the, working with the clients and not jumping to conclusions. I I, I swear, I, th- I think if you're saying that a place is haunted based on some kind of physical evidence that you've collected that's shaky, that's not real ethical. It's fine to collect evidence, say this is possibility evidence of some kind of haunting or some kind of paranormal activity. But unless it's definitive, don't pass it off as definitive. I also don't think it's ethical to sell equipment as ghost hunting equipment. I I think, I actually think that the companies that are making the ovulus and making these EMF detectors and these portals and programs and all this stuff, they are less ethical than the people using them because the people using them wouldn't know any better. If I go buy a REM pod and it says on the side of it that it detects ghosts. That always makes me laugh. uh, But it says on the side of the box it detects ghosts. It's detecting a ghost right now. And and then I tell the client, uh, that's what that does because it says it on the side of the box. (laughs) Who's not ethical? Is it me for not really understanding that? Or is it the person that marketed that to me Yes. And, and I just bought it hook, line, and sinker. It's capitalism, baby. Yes. Uh, the other thing that's ethical is not luring them out into the woods and then murdering them. I I agree with that. Um, okay, so no, maybe no it's a robbing, moot point. I no think robbing, everybody knows what... No murdering. Um, but if you're, gonna, if you're thinking about becoming a, an investigator and not a ghost hunter, be ethical or we're going to call you out. Because yeah. somebody's going to call us after you tell them that their baby's haunted. Catherine says, you talk about your mom's house like the caretakers of Hill House. I guess I don't remember. Like the caretakers of Hill House? Oh, oh. Uh, if you call out in the night, we won't hear you in the dark. Remember the weird lady? We'll watch it. We'll watch it again. Provide your findings and let the client come to their own conclusions. We should let our opinion. We shouldn't let our opinion be known to the client. We're only there for a night. What do we know? I think he's right. Oh, yeah, yeah. And... and I'll give hints of an opinion, uh, one way or another. If if I have a pretty good idea of what something is, I'll give a hint to that opinion. But if I don't, if I don't really know, I'll I'll present the possibilities to them, and I'll I'll let them choose their own adventure. When I think it's point. okay to say, you have infrasound, it could be causing this and this. We can absolutely prove you have infrasound. Or this is bad wiring. We can prove it is bad wiring. I think that's okay to say. Yeah. And I mean, and also don't discredit your client either because the thing is, is like, okay, I can prove it's bad wiring and there's high EMF. There's a theory out there that high levels of EMF can cause legitimate paranormal disturbances. So if you still feel like, okay, I'm not just being bombarded by EMF. It's not me. Okay. This could be what's causing your paranormal... Fix that and see if your paranormal stuff goes away. It doesn't matter if it's making you hallucinate and paranoid or if it's actually making a a ghost come haunt you. That might be one of the things that's causing it. That's one of the theories out there. Okay. What is Paracon events, tours, making money or selling product? Just because we're not going to get to the end of this list if we don't. uh, Yeah. Speedy, um, speedy. Well, you know, I think professional investigators are, are, that's how they make their money off of it. That's any money that we do make, which we don't make money, by the way. um, It's off of the Paracons giving tours of like Warehouse 9 or public locations and things like that. Um, And I, do do you think it's okay that we, we do have products. We have a book we sell. Yeah. You can buy t-shirts online. Um, when I think it's okay for us to say we're giving a tour of this building, the tour lasts two hours. We cannot promise that anything paranormal will happen. In fact, it probably won't. It might be very boring. And if they're still willing to hand us their money, I'm perfectly willing to take their money. Yeah. We just have to be as honest as possible, even to the point where we're making it sound worse than it is. What about donations? A lot of groups take donations still. I think that can turn real shady real fast. And I remember when we first started, you had set up something like that, and we decided really fast we can't. 
we can't be taking donations. Yeah, because I, f- I felt like it would be it would be interpreted as people felt like they were being pressured into doing it. Basically, we're not or, saying you have to donate, but... And I also didn't want to feel the pressure of, that person gave me money, so now I have to tell them what they want to hear. If they're not giving me money for investigating, I get to have whatever opinion I want about your property. And you can do with my opinion whatever you want, but you're not you're not influencing it by a, a paycheck in any way. And that's kind of why I don't like the, the, the donations platform. But I can also see where you would need that too, because a lot of this stuff is expensive, even if, even if you're not buying off the shelf equipment, right? And you're like, I'm, I can see why it might be necessary. I did not feel like it was ethical for us. Yeah. Um, going to investigate places is expensive. It costs gas. Um, people charge you to come stay in their abandoned places that don't have toilets now. I, I do think it's okay to say, uh, you know, if you are willing to donate for this ghost hunt, we will take you. Yeah. I think that's, well, and uh, Amelia says merch is okay, tours are okay, but you should never charge a person who is desperate for an answer. Um, Catherine says, yeah, but they aren't ghost hunting products and nothing is promised. Y'all are the most self-depreciating group ever. <laughs> I mean, I, I don't, there, there's, you know, I build equipment, but I have, I have not built anything that I think detects a guy. Like I've built things that do experiments to see what the result is. But well, I don't, I don't think gonna, I've built anything that has detected a ghost. And if you wanted to sell stuff like that, I think that'd be how you marketed it to you. Look, I'm not saying this to detect, this detects this. If I could do it on a, a, a cheap enough and a massive enough scale, I absolutely would. And I think that's what would make it sell better than like, you know, a, a ghost box you get from a ghost shop or something like that. Because I'd be like, this doesn't detect ghosts. This is exactly what this does. Um, it, what's really funny is the the Tyler Paracon is I had the uh, the detectors out. And it, it wasn't EMF detectors. Um, they are... Uh, RF detectors. Mm. Oh yeah, because people kept asking me about it. Is this a is this a ghost detector? And I and I would sit there for forty five minutes not selling them on. I'm like, this isn't going to find a ghost for you. And they're like, why should I buy it? And I'm like, what this is going to do is it's going to solidify data you get from another piece of equipment that you think detects ghosts. And a few people thought it was rad. They're like, that's really interesting. I never thought of it that way. And then, you know, at least 50 people walked away and they're like, that's stupid. If it doesn't detect ghosts, what do I care? And that's not the person I want investigating my house anyway. I forgot to message Mina that the show is coming on and now I feel bad. Oh, uh, I'm, yeah. I'm a monster. Uh, y'all will probably be bored is almost your tagline. You let them enjoy the location without faking anything or overhyping anything. Yeah, I, I hate it when we're going to a place and someone goes, I guarantee there will be activity. Because oh, yeah. I can guarantee there will not, because they said that. They just jinxed us. Turns out I'm really superstitious. Well, I really like it because then when I get the activity, I'm 100% not psyched for it. Because they said it was going to happen. So now I'm looking I'm looking for the telltale sign. What was the place we went where they put the, uh, the little wireless speaker in the attic? Is that Mineral Wells? Maybe. I don't know. But they're like, yeah people hear voices in this hallway and it's in like, sure enough, you heard voices. And and at first I was like, what? Like it it was too perfect. It was too perfect. And I found the speaker in the, the lady was like, Oh no, no, uh, that's, that's not mine. I don't know how that got here. And I'm like, Hmm, that's real interesting that this happened to be here. Yeah. Um, I'd rather people say you, you probably won't get activity because then if something happens, I'm psyched. Yeah. You know, um, when we were allowed to give tours of Warehouse 9, you know, we were telling people, look, nothing happens. Like, stuff has happened, but we're not guaranteed. Like, nothing's going to happen. And then when something did happen, that person was like, I got to get the F out of here. Like, right now. I'm so sorry I missed that. Oh, it was great. I like the... Uh, my favorite one was the lady that went into the closet and got the scratches on her arm and then told me she was going to sue me because I didn't tell her there were demons in the building. And I'm like, okay. Have fun with that. Um, rapid fire, rapid fire, trespassing, breaking and entering. It's bad. Don't do it. Um, I, what he said. I think a lot of groups start out that way. I think they all do because cemeteries are free. Yeah. Um, 
be respectful. It's fine. I just I don't I don't know. I think when another when there's like another big when there's another if it's a person saying they're a ghost hunter and they're like, oh yeah, I I snuck into this building or whatever. I'm like, okay, that is what it is. Or it's just like one or two people and they're like, haha, you know, this is what we do on the weekends. I get it. It's a hobby. Um, but if you're a, if you're trying to convince me that you're a professional ghost hunter or a, or a professional investigator or team, and then you proceed to tell me how you went and investigated, uh, the Baker hotel and I know they don't give anybody permission for that, I immediately go, you're not trustworthy as a professional investigator because I know that you'll just rifle through somebody's private property or you'll just go in there. Now, I want to go in there a lot too, but I, it's just... You say because we got escorted out by a police officer. I stuck my head in the window. We didn't... We didn't get... We, we, weren't, even, we weren't even in the building. It was unfair. The cop was like, you're standing too close to the wall. <laughs> We're not in there, man. Chill. But I also get that there's probably people that go in there there's and destroy 100, stuff. There's a hundred people a day and I, trying I, to get in and there. And other people suck and they screw stuff up for all of this. But, like, it's illegal to be in any cemetery in Texas past sundown. That is blanket illegal. But I think it's silly that's illegal. So uh, I'm perfectly willing to go in a cemetery after dark. And also, if the cops show up and you politely explain yourself... They're they're rednecks. They're from the same town. You, I mean, I, it has a lot to do with the location you're going oh, into. Also, if if you're if you're, uh, I just had a really bad moment of uh, maybe that's a, a little privilegey. Ooh, yeah, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Because it, it's very different for us to be uh, milling around a place that we're not supposed to be in the middle of the night, and also and, in and getting caught by the Somerville cops yeah. as opposed to. Um, a person of color or anyone in a bigger city where they're like, I, I wouldn't do that in a city, but like we're out in the middle of nowhere in these small towns. I think that's different, but I feel like now I feel like maybe I shouldn't say that's just, you probably don't do anything bad. Um, Jen has a question, but I don't, I want to answer it towards the end. I think it's good for, okay. Just remember to go back oh, to well. it then. Cause it's not on my screen. So, um, maybe just kind of mentally bookmark it. Um, so, okay, so say you're you're having stuff go on at your house, and you're like, okay, I need to call in an ex... Because I, th I think that's the thought that everybody has. Well, then maybe is, Jen's I, question is pertinent. How do, how do people contact you? Uh, I mean, I know I could just do it here, but I've had a few people ask, and I just tell them to Google NT Paranormal, but is there a more direct thing I could say? I, we have a phone number. I mean, like, it's specifically us... Um, yeah, I mean, I mean, if if you're asking like how to contact us, you can just Google us, and it's usually through email or through the phone number on the website. Th those are the two main ways, and it's just tell us what's going on, and we'll get back with you. But um, but say say you're you're having weird stuff happen at your house. I the, do frequently to the to the point you're curious about it, and if you're not an investigator yourself, you probably think in your head. There's got to be somebody I can call that knows more about this. Like, I've seen Ghostbusters. I've seen, uh, what, what are any of the other movies with the funny investigators that uh, come in? The Conjuring, uh, all those types of movies. Poltergeist. Yeah. So, it's, it's out there in the zeitgeist that there are experts or professionals, and you can call them. Um, and then, all of a sudden... You, you if you if you just Google Ghost Hunter online or you just Google Paranormal Investigator, you're gonna get like 50 results, like right off the bat. There's there's 50 teams in Fort Worth alone. By the way, we're based out of Fort Worth, Texas. Um, how do you how do we how do you vet that as as somebody that's the person? Because I'm not obviously call us. We're great, but but say we're not in your area, right? How would you? Now that you're more experienced as an investigator, how would you how would you vet a potential investigator coming into your home? What what are the key things you look for? What are the things you ask? You know, I don't know because I never thought of having a stranger do it. Every time something happened, I was like, oh, I better go buy a recorder. I would want some sort of reference in like. I know they're having videos out doesn't actually speak to their validity, but I would want to watch something they had 
made. I would want to watch like, oh, where's your YouTube? That is a good point. That does bring a purpose to posting your stuff online because for a long time we didn't. Mm-hmm. And, it, and it's when we posted it up there that we were like official or whatever. But um, I guess I guess that just does speak to there's a purpose of making some of those videos and, and not just to get hits, but to have a body of work where somebody can look how you operate. Yeah, that's so, what so I people can know. How do they behave on a site? Like, are are they like us where we're goofing around and cussing and uh, freaking out every little thing? Are they like Zach Baggins? Are they getting possessed? I say, are they are are they throwing around religious rhetoric that I don't agree with? Or, are, are they using psychics? Or are, are they, they not using the religious yeah. rhetoric I want? Uh, yeah, are they using psychics? Like, what's how do they act? What what are they doing? Like, you know, that is a good point you bring that up because that wasn't in like my pre head canon for how that conversation would go. I w- I wouldn't think, oh, go watch their videos because that's in my head that's like the uh, the almost the least important thing. I don't think to it, me, but because it doesn't prove anything to me. That's what I'm saying is like it doesn't prove anything, but it does show it, at least who they are as people while a camera is on them. Right. And, and, and it's going to show you some of their methodology and, and how they think or at least how they want to be how they want to present cases. Yeah. Are they are they taking cases seriously or are they doing cases for fun? So actually you you bring up a, a really good uh, point there at looking at the video and immediately like saying it's a double edged sword because right it, it is a presentation like it's meant to be entertaining to some extent so it, there, so it obviously they have to, to start it, it does it does gives you somewhere to start because even even though we're making presentations and it's supposed to be entertaining you are getting a good chunk of what we're doing or what we're saying or what we're thinking at least in that package. Do we try, do we even try and debunk stuff or we, yeah, that sort of thing. Like if I watched two videos, let's say I watched the taps guys, ghost hunters were the ones I liked. And then I watched Zach Bagans. I would want the taps people to come investigate my house. I would not want him in my house because if he, that's how he acts on camera, I cannot imagine how much worse he'd be without a camera. Yeah. It, I get, yeah. There's some kind of truth to that on camera persona. Um, and you know, and the taps guys, you know, maybe off camera, they're not so good either, but it, at least you have like some kind of idea of what you're getting in that package. You're getting some kind of idea, like what equipment they're going to bring in and, and like, um, are they going to interview other people? Things well, like that. I, I'm socially anxious, so I wouldn't call places they'd been or people that had done their ghost hunt, but I would check their Facebook. I would see if there was ratings. I would see. I'm so weird. I'd see if they post political stuff, where, where they lean, that sort of stuff, just because I it, care. It in, it affects it. It does affect it because uh, it's, if they're, they're going to be posting. If they've posted, oh, one like equals one prayer for this kid, then I'm immediately they're not coming over. If they're posting weird boomer shit on their Facebook, then we're out. Um, criminal, I think criminal background checks are a good idea, but like a lot of us that are. Uh, in the media, like we're not using our real names. Like Ashton Rogers isn't my, uh, it, it's it's close, but it's not my actual name. So like you can't. Holy crap! It's check. not. Who are you? Yeah, you can't background check that. But like if you're a potential client or whatever, and you say, "Hey, I would like to background check you," I would give that person my real name. Like it's not a big secret. I would be amused if they asked to background check me. That would be funny. Is there stuff on your background? No. <laughs> really? It just would be very confusing. Oh, oh, <laughs> yeah, okay. Uh, Zach brings priests, uh, brings priests at least if he thinks it's a demon. I guess I haven't seen any of those episodes. I can't stand watching that show. I cannot stand it. It, it hurts my brain. That show hurts my brain. Um, but then again, Ghost Hunters were what got me into like trying to do this so maybe that's why i'm so loyal to this would you contact uh other groups to find out how they talk about other groups because i i find that in our community is very interesting me absolutely not because i can't make a phone call without wanting to cry well you could you send them an email or a text or whatever we're all online like everything no no one's calling me. It, by the way, if I get a phone call from somebody wanting an we, investigation... We assume something's very wrong. W- no, I, I assume that that person is insane because uh, nobody does that. But um, 
you know, I've the last like three or four investigations that came our way, I referred to other groups. Um, Emilio just made a really good point about Zach Vegans, and now if he watched the Alton Bridge episode, and now we can't trust him. That's At true. Least he doesn't tell you to burn family photos in Disney movies. Uh, and, this one did. Uh, because he was he was an ordained minister or whatever. But anyway, so. sorry I interrupted. I don't know. Like, um, so see how they talk about other groups. But what if there's a bunch? Like I would also be like, oh, but I don't know what's going on behind the scenes. I mean, that there's. I don't think other groups really throw a lot of shade. We talk like they do, but I don't think anybody really cares so much. But there's definitely other groups where I would like recommend. It. Like if somebody called and I'm like, I look, I can't do investigate i don't have time or or um i i don't think i have the skills that you're looking for i don't think i'm gonna have the answers you want these are the people to go talk to because we do network with other investigators we may not like their methods or we may not agree with it or or they may have like a different style or whatever but i do observe them and how they behave and how they talk about their cases and how they and what clients have said about them and, and if it's generally positive like if it generally seems like they help a lot of people and people are happy with them i do take note of them and i will refer cases to them i'll say hey look i i don't think they're bringing any science evidence to this table but people are generally happy with them they're not hurting anybody and uh people are happy with the results that they get go talk to them and see if they can help you and i think i think that is really like i would refer people to immediately like if i didn't have time to do something he's basically the only one i would refer people to i've anymore. i've referred so like there are some people i've referred to other groups because i felt like they needed a group with an investigation emilio doesn't necessarily have time for that but say there's somebody that calls me and they're like can you just come out for a few hours and check this thing out and i don't have time emilio would absolutely him and his brother would be on my list of people I would call. Hey, can you go check this out on our behalf and just tell us what you think about this? And then maybe, maybe we can all go investigate it or, or maybe you can handle it while you're there. Sort of. Well, thing. yeah. I mean, it says if every group operated the exact same way, then the research would be at a dead end. The unique methods always bring new findings. And yeah, that's true. And there might be another group more tailored to like what they need to. It also depends on the goals you're going for. So well, that's what I meant. Like, I, I have such a hard time stepping out of what my goals are, and my goal is scientific evidence. Like I, I don't, I don't care if we get rid of anything, or, or any like it, that's so far removed from what I'm thinking. But that's not the goal of every other group. They're not trying to find proof. They're trying to find evidence, and and there might be a group that's better tailored to whatever the thing going yeah. on is. So what's a red flag, though? Like, what would you consider a red flag when vetting uh, an investigator? Uh, if they say it costs $200 for oh, us to God, come yeah, investigate. They're going to charge you. Um, if they say, uh, if they start asking for donations or pressuring for donations, um, if they do the investigation and they say there's something there, but they charge to get rid, get rid of, of it, it, pretty much all the money stuff. If, if there, if there's talk of money or any kind of pressure, you know what? Donations are fine, but it should never be mentioned. It, it should be brought up by the client. Hey, is there a way I can donate to you? You know, we don't ask for donations, but I'm broke. If you, if you feel like you want to give us some money, we'll take it. But if you say, Hey, you have the option of donating. I'm I'm already turned off. Like it, it yeah, and people me. will feel pressured. They will feel pressured. Yeah, if you if you bring it up, um, I don't I don't think being affiliated with a church is a red flag. But I think you you need to be really conscious of what you're getting when you ask for that. If you ask for an exorcism from the church or an investigation from a local parish or things like that. Like a house blessing. Yeah, they, like they are going to look at things from an angle of religion, not just objectively. So, and if that's what you want, that is fine. If, you know, if you're going to... Well, that's why we have a list of people that we can recommend because yeah. some people are looking for that. But but there's people that have things that happen that aren't churchgoers, and, but they don't know what to do, so they go to the church and they ask the church to come look at the house and that's coming from a certain angle of belief and a lot of those a lot of those investigators they're absolutely trying to get more people in their church yeah. and it's it's a 
it is can be a recruiting method. I'm not saying it always is, but I mean, this is if you want a demon, go to church. <laughs> is true uh, yeah I, I was scared of catholic priests for the longest because i thought they were the thing bringing the demons because i was not catholic and every time i saw a catholic in a movie someone was possessed so i was convinced that nuns and priests were evil i read an article recently that said uh catholic exorcisms are getting burnt out because the number of possessions has doubled over the past 10 years okay well uh uh, allowing guest investigators hazards benefits. Uh, I think the benefit is if you want us, if uh, they find us ghost hunts, if we are like, Hey, if you find us this place, you can go with us. Then they might find us a place. Yeah. Um, so the hazards are, are from us or uh, contamination of the experiments uh, is a big deal because since they're not you, since they're not used to the methodology that we use, they're pretty much there having a good time. That's a ghost hunter. That's a hobbyist. And so if you're trying to be a professional group or you're trying to be a serious group, or you're trying to do serious research, having guests on hand is a huge hindrance to you because that's just an extra person you have to wrangle and rule out of every bit of evidence that you get. Um, I think it can be a benefit too, though, um, if you can brief them right and you can wrangle them right uh, and get them on board with your brand it's a new set of eyes looking at something because we're so inundated with what we're doing. It's, it's that mass hysteria thing you were talking about. We, we were the guest investigators watching them do the thing and we have a completely different opinion on what they're doing. Um, and if you're a group that is open to outside conflicting opinions on how you're doing things, I think that guest investigator can be a huge boon. Well, that's, it was actually a guest investigator that made us realize that we were underreacting and underreporting the way we felt right. our emotions. And uh, it, it took someone else coming in and like saying stuff out loud for us to realize, Hey, this is like data. We, we need to say it. We need to record it. Somehow. Yeah. yeah. E even, even though we think like, uh, emotional states have a lot to do, but it needs to be documented. Like we weren't documenting it is what the problem was. And it's because, because we were like, Oh, me being anxious isn't evidence. Well, no, me being anxious is evidence. It's not scientific proof that anything's going on, but it does influence the data that's being collected at the time. When I think a lot of us tried to play the game of who has the biggest balls, don't say you're scared because then that makes you right. the loser, which I think we finally got past but I think that was a pretty prevalent feeling we had for oh, yeah. at least a couple of years. Oh, absolutely. Everything we went into was a total gut check. I, so like, I'm going to be the first to go into I, the room. I wanted to go into the dark room I'm going to be myself. the last to leave. Yeah. Uh, I'll go walk through the woods by myself. It's I, I, I do think we've gotten a lot better about that. But for a while, that was the game we were playing is who can do the thing and that no one who, else will do. Who, who can withstand the isolation thing? Because mm -hmm. we were like... Most of the paranormal stuff happens when it's isolated. And so that's kind of what we were going with. Oh, it became a competition. But yeah, but we were absolutely doing it to see who could do it. And and then it was spoiling the data because when one person does that all the time and then the, they actually get creeped out because they're trying to have the biggest balls, you're not collecting any of the the actual data from there. It's, it's all spoiled. Um, it doesn't matter because I have the biggest balls. He's got big balls. She's got big balls. We've got the biggest balls of them all. Is that a real song? Yeah, it's ACDC. Oh. Okay. You don't know that song? No. Uh, what's the next one? Oh, I say the other, yeah, the one big hazard is if someone gets hurt on your time, on your property. Yeah, and yeah, it depends on how you're operating the guest thing. So if you're taking a guest to a property that you're not the owner of or in control of. There's a lot of uh, insurance risks and things like that. And even as like the homeowner, if you invite a team out, they're guests on your property. So like if I break my foot while I'm investigating your house, uh, unless we have signed some kind of affidavit uh, on paper, come to an agreement, you're liable for my injuries. Um, Emilio says guests need to be well aware of how serious the group will take the location. Some places could be considered entertainment slash fun to be at others. It's a serious place that should be not taken lightly. 
Ali says, I'm supposed to go to a haunted location with a client at some point, and I'd love to give you all the location after I go so you can get your own data and experience. Apparently, it's, oh, it's by Dublin. Oh, yeah. I, yeah, we totally, yeah, send us that. That would be great. So you have the next question on here is starting your own investigations and teams, and I think that's a really easy one. You go and you buy a recorder and you start wandering around cemeteries like... Yeah, but I, I think I think when I when I wrote that on the paper, I was thinking like, how do you find other like minded people that do that? The internet. There's yeah. this thing. It's online. But I didn't find y'all online. I didn't find I didn't find actual like minded people. See, I see a lot of groups that break up. Like we haven't broke up. Like we all do different things and stuff. But we haven't got into one of those big fights. We were also friends. We've noticed this over and over. We were friends before we ghost hunted. A lot of these other people are friends because they ghost hunt, mm-hmm. which seems to be an invitation for drama. Well, especially in a field that has so many different conflicting ideas, because I think people... I it's think drama ridden anyway. Well, I think when people start <coughs> out... But before they become silly ghost hunters, I think everybody has the drive of I want to do this seriously. So I want to get a bunch of different uh, opposing opinions and I want to try to get this all to work. You think this way, you think this way, I think this way. And I think it starts with the best of intentions, but then they get into it and it's it is a hobby. It is a it is a pastime you go do. It's just like playing video games or anything like that, um, because it's it's just going to these like historical sites and sh- and I think people get on each other's nerves because they try to force these relationships and no one's getting paid for it. So it's not even like, Oh, I'm here at my job. I just have to work with this person. You absolutely have in this field. You have to like the people you're working with a hundred percent because Catherine says beliefs clash. You end up infighting, but yeah, you're, you're right. You, I mean, if we were all getting paid, like if this was a job, I, I really wouldn't care if me and you got along. Because I'd be like, it's a paycheck. At the, yeah. I can at the end of the day, I go home and it's a job. It is what it is. But because it's something that requires my free time and your free time, it's something we're investing ourselves into. So if you don't like the asshole that's writing there with you, why are you doing it? And I, I think people hit that re- realization at some point and it starts drama. So I think when you're starting, like, how do you find the right people? I think you need to find... Um, like-minded people. Well, that's Emilio and, says it's easy if you just want to, if you just find ghosts to find, if you just find ghosts to find like-minded people. But if you're more logical, then most people annoy you. It is true that, yeah, I have, I have a hard time with it. So we need and, like a farmer's only for ghost hunting. You don't have to be lonely <laughs> at t- hunters only. Suddenly there's com. just Tinder profiles. I'm not on here to get laid. I'm on here to find someone to lo- ghost hunt this uh, abandoned asylum with me. Uh, we should do it. We should market it. It should be like Tinder, but it's haunted locations. Like you swipe. No, no, no. Ooh, yes, I do want to go to a hospital. Well, here's what I do. And if people match, then you can meet up and go there. Instead of making friends with people because I'm ghost hunting, I force my friends to ghost hunt. I already have friends. I've just <laughs> got to make them convinced that they want to do this too. And look, it worked out for me really well. <laughs> um, yeah, we got where to start, how to network. I think the best way to network is, like you said, online, but uh, probably go to Paracons. That's the best way to network. Places to start, though. This Randomly is go to haunted places at night, like Alton Bridge, and you will find a ghost hunter. They just hang out there. It's true. Um, but how do you know what the haunted places are? And and that's what I mean, like where to start. So we said we don't want you to be any. We don't want you breaking and entering. So where do you start? Well, fortunately, ghost hunting's got more popular. You can just pay to do it. Go online. It sucks. Start at those places. Like when the um when they're like, hey, come check out uh, Haunted Hill House or come check out the Alton Bridge tour well, and things like that. Go do them. Start, Go do them. Start at small local museums. Like Cleburne has the Leyland Museum. Start at a small local museum. The person behind the counter probably isn't getting paid a lot. They're probably there because they're passionate about town's history. Well, yeah, but you're talking about finding investigations. Well, I'm talking about Hood County Jail. Yeah. Like they're going to know, hey, if you pay 
20, 50 bucks, you can do this little spot, see if you like it without having to lay out $400. Yeah, absolutely. Um, sleepy towns that have historical monuments are the best places to go, especially if they have like those little museums. It, those are perfect. Because if you just go talk to the person and make friends with them, they'll at least put you in the right direction. Because somebody has asked, is this place haunted? There's a lot of old stuff here. Um those ghost tours are great because if you talk to the a or well Catherine just said uh groups are annoying though ghost tours are awful <laughs> they are oh but you God. just said they're great they're great because you find places make up your mind dude no the, the tour is bad like it for for ghost hunting like you get the history of the place and you get to see like 20 places all rapid fire and then you go back to those places outside of the tour and you're like, hey, I heard this place is haunted. And they're like, oh, yeah, uh, my uncle Jimmy uh, saw a ghost in the bathroom. Hey, can I ghost hunt this place? Like, that's how you find that's how you find places. Yeah. If you don't want to like there are the, if you have money, there's the big expensive ones. Oh, yeah. Yeah. You can just you can just pay to to go do a ghost. hunt, And they'll they'll bring out teams. We do it. I mean, we have done it. We're. If you pay this amount, you can come out to needful things and we'll do the thing. But, you know, unfortunately, the person that was running that wanted a whole bunch of money for it and then wanted us to, like, host the deal. And nobody wanted to pay that much money to do it. So Sorry, there's so much contamination. These comments are contaminated. Contamination. Yeah, Catherine, like, you're not going to get any real ghost hunting done if you're on a tour with a bunch of other people, but I think it's a good way to find other places to pay that, like, you could be like, hey, I'll give you 20 bucks if you let me, you know, ghost hunt here for a couple hours. I'm sure a lot of people would be open to that. Yeah. Getting close to wrapping up. So kind of like talking it through. Do you do you think people can be professional investigators? Like, like, really? Or has your opinion changed on it at all over the past few years or over the course of this conversation? I mean, I, I think you can have a professional group, but I don't think you can have. I think if they're claiming to be experts, they can't they can't be professional. I think you can have longevity in what you've done. I think you can be transparent and honest I think you can have a professional attitude about what you're doing, but I don't think this is a professional hobby or field. Right. Field. I think it's something that, like... There's a severe lack of data to, to, to really call yourself um, versed in it because it's all made up. It's Everything we do is... it's it's Like, there's science behind it, but it's all a guess. It's it's all made up. We're like, we're doing this experiment and this is what we found, but we can't really interpret what that tells us. And then what Emilio is doing with his word bank, uh, where he just makes things up and then uh, trolls me online about it. Um, Good, Emilio. Keep it up. <laughs> or or just just anything like that. It's um, it's It's all data based on a bunch of opinions that come together, but we don't all really know. And I'm really skeptical skeptical of anybody that's skeptical skeptical of uh, anybody that says that they know for sure, y you know. And and I and I believe that they think that. Like I, I don't think that they're lying, but it just it doesn't mesh with my idea of what I think a professional could say. Y you know, what I mean, it, it'd be it'd be like your regular doctor absolutely saying, not sending you to an oncologist when they think you might have cancer. It feels like an extreme uh, metaphor there. Well, it's, you know, he, he's he got evidence that you might have cancer. And he's got this test and this test and this test. But until he sends you to the oncologist to do the very specific test you need to figure out where that cancer is and what it is, because somebody does have that knowledge, um, everything he's telling you is is just a very, very educated guess. And so, like, he, he can be a professional, but he can also be a professional, but not an expert on cancer, right? And then you go, but in our field, we don't have the oncologist. There is no one. See, I think if you do it long enough, you can be an expert. But professional, see, I have a different, like, definition for these things. Yeah. Uh, no, and, and you're flipping it on me, and, and that, make, that makes sense, too. Like, I also get that, so... It's I don't it's a good discussion, but I have a hard time reconciling it 
my myself, and, and that's why I like discussing it. Because if nothing else, it it lets people know where we come from uh, on the topic, and um, I think it's a it's a good conversation for helping vet us on like how we think about investigations. We can be professional investigators, but not an expert on ghost demons hauntings. I think if you've been doing it for years and years and years if you're probably an expert in that, you know, as much as anybody in the field knows, I think you're an expert on the information that's out there. It, like, yeah. like, like I can be an expert on exorcisms as they're performed. And then I can also be an expert on the uh, psychological side of it as well. And, and I can tell you all, and I can be an expert on it, but I really think we're all saying the things, same thing and just switch it, flip flop in the words. Yeah. Like, you can know what you're doing and you can behave in a responsible and honest way. But like until I'm getting paid for it, I don't consider myself a professional. <laughs> yeah. Oh no, you're right. You're right. So I'm, but by that definition, uh, ghost adventures, the Zach Bagans crew, they are professional. professionals. They are professional investigators because they get paid to do Absolutely. their TV shows. Does that make them the best investigators? No, I don't, I don't believe so. Well, it's like a, I can go see a psychologist and they are a, a professional, but that does not mean that they're a, an expert or good. That That is true. They, yeah. They've got a certificate. I've met some doctors who were, I would not trust to look at a mole and tell me if it was skin cancer. They're a professional, but they're not an expert. Here's a question. Do you think the field is oversaturated? Yes. With, you do? With, with everything. With, with people calling themselves professionals just with people is that just because you want more stuff for us yes. or do you really feel like it's over no i feel like it is oversaturated i feel like the ice cream man is driving by and it's i can't Shh. yes this i love this podcast. go by the uh ice cream where it's got sonic with the dead gumball eyes I feel like somebody is going to go, okay, the ice cream man's going by now, and then they'll triangulate our location based on that. <laughs> Just come and, murderous. Yeah, like, um, we're going to get swatted now. I think it's saturated with people because I think people are doing stuff like going out and tearing stuff up. They're doing dumb shit. They're getting hurt. They're being goofy. I... I think there's just too many people who don't know what they're doing or don't even have a goal going out there. And I do think it's hurtful for groups that are actually trying to be serious. Yeah. Cause you just have people just going out and loitering. Well, and we and, have and the right plaza in Cleburne where no one can ghost hunt now because some jackass went through and wiggled all the doorknobs and file cabinets of like state representatives offices. And now they've right. ruined it for everybody. Yeah. There's not a, uh, you, you know, you know what I think that stems from. I think it's a bunch of. I, I think there's a lot of people out there that are looking for something to do that don't have any respect for the field. And I, I'm not saying the field's not silly. There's a lot of us that like believe in Bigfoot and ghosts and UFOs, and we say crazy things like, "I think alternate dimensions are overlapping on each other." It's and, silly, and, but it's earnest. We believe these things in earnest. It's and, to be commended. Well, the problem is, is um, you know, anybody that's listening to this might easily lump me in with somebody that's a QAnon follower or somebody that um, believes that we didn't go to the moon, right? We're, we're in with the conspiracy theory people. Moon landing. We, paranormal investigators are lumped into the same silly field or the same category is like conspiracy theorists and people that live in their mama's basement. Okay, and there's like levels that. of conspiracy theory though. I get you, but then... They have nothing better to do, so so they they go on a paranormal <laughs> investigation sort of thing, and since they don't have respect for the field, they do things that F it up for people that are trying to take it seriously. Uh, Amelia and uh, Catherine just jumped to the same like crazy conspiracy. It's flat earthers. Yeah, I people do, like, I hate that people do lump us in with that, but when I try to argue against it, I have no good logical reason, except that what we're doing isn't harmful and believing that there's a flat earth and spreading propaganda or believing in QAnon and spreading that con con uh, propaganda is absolutely objectively harmful. Uh, we're not harming anyone. Well, and I, I feel like we're not just doing YouTube research either. Like flat earthers are like, Oh, well this dude on YouTube said this thing. 
And I think a lot of the people that ruin it for the serious investigators did that. They're like, oh, this dude on YouTube said this thing, blah, 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 and it makes it silly. But we're actually going out and trying to like apply some kind of theory. I, I mean, e- even if you don't do it the way we do it and you just go out with an EMF detector and you're, or you use a Ouija board somewhere and you're, you're not screwing places up, you know, you're, you're not ruining it for everybody else. You're investigating, you're naturally being curious, like your methods might, might not be perfect, but you are being curious. You are doing the process of science and learning in, in, in that sense. But when you go and just kick over tombstones and uh, drink beers at the investigation, Cemetery, yeah. and, and you're basically just having a party yeah. for the sake of it, and it gets caught on camera, and then the the person's property that you did that on is like, man, I'm never doing this again. It ruins it for everybody else, and and that's why I think there's an oversaturation or over po- it's it's too popular. Like that's the part of it I hate where it got into the mainstream that yeah. bothers me because there's like a line like i think it's commendable to be skeptical about everything but i also think there is something commendable about believing something in earnest if it doesn't hurt anyone else and and i i love the idea of just being curious like when we first started doing that, i was i was scared of it uh but i was curious enough to go ahead and try it because i had everybody backing me up at the time i would never have i would never have done this alone I would never, ever have done it. I did it at the warehouse and it kind of freaked me out and I was okay with it. But then we started like going to the cemeteries and stuff like that. And I would never go spend a night, even with my belief system, the way it is and and what I think about what we do, I probably wouldn't go hang out in a cemetery at night. And I don't think cemeteries are haunted. I probably would not go sit in any of the places that we've investigated and said aren't haunted just alone by myself at night. I wouldn't have ghosted at a cemetery at night because by my logic, they're the least haunted places on the planet. The, but it's that cognitive dissonance. The the lot when I'm alone, the logic doesn't matter. I oh, know I get you. It's, I just, it just it doesn't. I've always work. liked cemeteries. I'm very weird. Um, I like them too. I liked them when I was a kid too. I like doing the the the, little, the, the rubbings and, yeah. and stuff like that. But anyway, yeah, I, I I do think there is like something commendable though about like everyone out there believing stuff in earnest. It's the people that are neither here nor there. They're not doing it because they're skeptical and they're trying to prove something and they're not doing it because they believe they're doing it because they want to kick over tombstones and act a fool. I, they're just destructive. That's it's, the oversaturation. It, it, yeah. Um, I don't know, but I, I feel like TV is oversaturated with it. I feel like oh, it, Lord, I, every freaking uh, show is a ghost hunting show now. It, it makes me mad that it misrepresents the the people that are doing it. Seriously, Joe Nickel, the Emilio's, us. Um, and I mean, we're not even that serious about it, but I feel like it harms us. We're like, we can't like anytime we loosen up or make a joke, somebody's got some comment online about it. it's like, oh, you don't you're not serious about this. Man, I have invested so much of my life and money into this. Screw you. I am absolutely serious about it. I'm still waiting for my moment that it proves that you get to. I'm still hopeful that I will have that moment. And so, like, that I, that makes me serious. I mean, I, I still sometimes get creeped out at night and can't sleep. Well, that's because I'm your like, bathroom's I, fucking haunted. I know. It, it, Catherine it, says a lot of people have experiences when they're alone, though. Yeah, well. That's why we try not to be alone. <laughs> that's, that's specifically why we try to We're, send people off alone. Yeah, that's it's terrible. But um, yeah, so that's pretty much the show. Um, I'm, but I guess to answer the question, like if you want to contact us, the best way is either here through the Facebook page, um, on the website ntparanormal.com. You can go to the contacts page. Uh, we have uh, a phone number. I think it's nine four nine seventy four ghost, but it's it's on our contact page. It's so freaking ridiculous! It's awesome. I think it's great. Oh my god! Um, and yeah, I always answer. And even if we don't like uh, specifically us take your case, we don't turn anybody away. Like we'll find somebody to take your case. And if you're just dead set, you're like, no, I want you doing it we're probably more likely to take it because it means you have some kind of like investment in the way we do. Typically the ones that I give out are 
there's key words in their ask. They're like, we want you to get rid of the ghost. And I'm like, you absolutely did not read the mission statement at all. Uh, where I said 10 times, we don't do that. We don't know how to do that. That's not the goal of what we're doing. We're just coming into your house to document the things that are happening. And then we give that information to you to do something with it. And if it's explainable uh, phenomenon, we will tell you how to reduce those things because those are th- th- that we can help you with. And we are over our time. We need to go. Yeah. Um, we're, we're trying to get better at this. <laughs> Oh, we're pretty close. As long as, like, we're within five, ten minutes, we're good. We started, like, five, ten minutes late anyway. But um, were there any other questions we needed to address? Um, if you guys got any questions about this episode, anything we do, uh, if we got anything wrong and you want us to you want to call us on it, uh, we're usually pretty good about backtracking and saying that we never said that thing. Um, <laughs> you misunderstood. <laughs> I said the opposite. Yeah, that's that's a hundred percent not what we said. Why can't I find that episode online anymore? Don't worry about it. Um, yeah, check us out ntparanormal.com. Um, pretty soon we're gonna get this uh, back up on iTunes and all the normal outlets like uh, we normally do. We have been posting to our uh, YouTube page where you can find all our back episodes, uh, things like that which we're in the process of redoing those better because we can do better now. But I uh, hope everybody liked the episode and be safe this weekend. If you're going out uh, hunting for spooky stuff, uh, don't get caught by people you're not supposed to be caught by or, uh, you know, go through legitimate channels. Uh, the air quotes again, because uh, this is the air quotes episode. They're all the air quotes episode. All right. Uh, let me just uh, click this uh, little thing and everybody have a good weekend.